And they have six of these sensor dot activation points that's going to provide superior connectivity. Life's good. Let's go. Hey, what's going on? I'm back from a break of making videos. Been really busy just riding my vest, enjoying it. Been pretty much done kind of messing around, uh, tweaking my vest. Actually still on 5.3. Finally on float package. Shout out to Mitch, nudge me into getting on there. But today, really exciting news. We got the Exile front pad sensor that I'm going to be installing on a Cushwide. All of this is proprietary to Greg, who developed this front pad from scratch. There's so many features we have to cover, but what I really love is just how gorgeous it is. I mean, just look at the you cracking a white cloth. <laughs> My girlfriend getting drunk in the corner there. Just look at this sensor, this EXC or the Exile front pad sensor. It's got 12 points of contact uh, that you can really mold to whatever front pad that you like to use. The intricate color and the details in the lattices, phenomenal to look at. And with clear grip tape, which I'm gonna do today, you're gonna be able to see it while you ride and show it to everyone else who wants to take a look at it. Art and technology in one. There's a bunch of great features. One is you get full use of the real estate of whatever front pad that you like. It's a universal fit for virtually all uh, aftermarket foot pads. Uh, you got your Kush Wides, Kush Low, you got Viper, um, the Craft and Ride, all of that. So whatever floats your boat, whatever feels most comfortable for you, you are free to use. 12 individual panels shaped for each section of the foot pad to offer the best contouring and rebound possible. There's width adjustment for trail, trick, and street riders. Superior connectivity over stock. Faster, more reliable activation. Easy installation. And just freaking dope looking. What other front sensor pad looks like this? I mean, I'm just hyped to put clear grip tape and just look at this while I ride all the time. Very nicely done, Greg. I know it took many months of R&D and setbacks and really excited for you for the community and really share this innovation for, for everybody else. The best part is Greg told me to beat the shit out of this. That just shows his confidence in how much he believes in the product, how much research and testing he's already done. I'm gonna be following Greg's instructions to a T. Let me give you all the things that you need. Front pad, obviously. A razor blade for cutting an entry point or exit point for the sensor wire. A piece of cardboard to lay on the bottom so you don't cut through your table. Glass cleaner, paper towels, your grip tape. This is clear grip tape. I'm going to use a cush wide to trace over the gri clear grip tape. And then you need a at least a 10 by 10 inch Ziploc bag filled with water. Last things, patience and diligence, which I don't have. <sighs> Hoping I can make it through this. I saw the instructions, doesn't look too bad. Let's see how we do, let's get into it. Before I go through all this, let me just make sure the sensor works. So I already put the six pin connector into my board and let's plug her in. Oh, we have life. I wonder where's the limit, let's see. I love how wide it covers the front pad. Put the water in this cooler just in case it spontaneously explodes. Because what can happen, will happen. 
So Greg says install sh takes around 10 minutes and then there's a six hour curing time before you put on the grip tape and final testing. The first thing I'm gonna do is kind of figure out where to cut on the foot pad or this a little higher just because I think your feet tends to stay more towards the front than the rear. Oh, I'm gonna be putting approximately there. I'm just gonna mark it with a razor blade. All right, cool. So let's cut out this hole. I didn't measure where to cut the entry point in the pad correctly. I kind of did it too high. The area where you plug in the cables for the controller was actually like lower down here. So make sure you measure that as best as you can. So what I did was I further cut down below so that when the cable goes in like so and you're standing on it, it's not pushing against the connection point. So just make sure you kind of measure that out. I cut the initial hole kind of up here and there wasn't enough space to get into the compartment here so it was kind of putting pressure on this cable to make sure you measure this out so it goes in as nicely and flush as possible so step one was filling the bag with ziploc which will be done step two is clean the surface that the sensor is going to be applied to with glass cleaner. You want no debris or residue. You want a clean, smooth surface, and he says it's very important. So let's do that. Step three, peel sensor backing and put to side, tacky side up. Oh God, I'm nervous about this. Do not do that. Oh my god. Okay. Chill, 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 chill. Step four is don't get your finger stuck on the sensor tail. <laughs> it's like a rat trap. Spray glass cleaner all over surface to apply and let set and let sit for 30 seconds to let it pull in the concave. Oh shit. I forgot there's a hole in the middle. Ooh. Yeah, it's really pulling. <laughs> God, I am so bad at this. A piece of paper towel there. Learn from my mistakes, guys. Spray all over. Step five is take sheet of paper towel. Dip in, dip corner into the pool to absorb and remove all excess glass cleaner. You want the surface with a light, wet sheen and not be saturated. No suds either. Otherwise, this will cause clouding and odd patterns in the adhesive, which is unpleasant to the eye and makes the sensor take longer to dry. This is a case of more is not better. Step six, take sensor and apply to surface. Position to desire, and then press down on all the panels with fingers over areas and hold a few seconds. Give it another wet sheen here. Oh, this is terrifying. I think I remember I wanted it closer to the front. Really mold to the concave. Looks kind of straight. More to the right, just by like another millimeter. I'm having a little trouble with this right here. This is not staying down. Push it down. No. Hm. Maybe I gotta push it up. I'll lift this here to release some tension. Huh, that was a lot better. Ah, came back up. What do you think, guys? Looks pretty good. Hopefully you're not too OCD, because then this will probably drive you a little mad. That was step six. You take sensor and apply to surface. Position to desire, and then press down on all the panels with fingers over areas and hold for a few seconds. If you wish to expand the width of the sensor, this is the time to do it. In this case, please move and position one side on foot pad, leaving other hemisphere laying on surface, tacky side down. Once one side is placed, then proceed to position remaining hemisphere. Step seven, take paper towel balled up in one hand and begin to smooth out and push down, forcing fluid from under sensor out to sides and seams and allow the paper towel to absorb ejected fluid. Chase the papered hand with your other hand holding down what you just wiped. The adhesive is very wet at this time and the pushing may lift where you just covered. Your other hand will prevent your actions from lifting the sensor back up. 
It's important. You want as much moisture out from under the sensor as possible. I put a light sheen of glass cleaner, but it seemed like it dried up very quickly underneath. There's, I don't have any liquid coming out. Maybe I should have put more. Seems like it's pretty darn dry. So very important, make sure there are no air bubbles, kinks, or kinks in the eight connection bridges and no raises or warping. If there is, peel up sections and readjust and place down for a flush fitting. You want every part of the sensor to sit flat and flush with as much fluid out from under it as possible. Everything is flush with the sensor and here are the eight connection points you have. Two, four, six, eight or eight here. My only concern is this connection bridge is warped. I hit up Greg to see what we can do. Let's see what he says. Okay, once everything is set, take bag of water and gently place on top of sensor with bag, with the bag over hanging the widest end of the foot pad by one inch. This will afford even and constant pressure on top of the sensor, forcing it to contour and create a solid bond with the surface at all points of contact. Bag is clear so you can look through the sensor, look through to see the sensor's reaction at any time. You must use a Ziploc with water for best results. All right, so according to Greg, it looks like I may not have installed this bottom part correctly. So I'm gonna peel this up and apply pressure here and then lay down the bottom part again. I'm surprised this adhesive will st still be usable after. So let's start here, put pressure. Oh, it looks like he's right. The pressure has been released and it is flush. Looks like it worked for this side. I, you see how there's kind of a gap here? It should have been a little closer. But anyway, worked out. Whew, I was uh, concerned I had to cut a little part of this which actually would be okay but it looks like there's only one about one millimeter that I can cut before it um, breaches the sensor itself I'm pretty happy with that really happy with that actually let me put the water on top again just so it rests another maybe five ten minutes or so and we will come back all right for step nine it says come back Ten minutes later, come back and check. This is the time to correct any mistakes if a panel is off somehow. Bubbles, kinks, or warps, just peel up the sections and reapply in correct form. Then, repeat step seven. Important, you want to remove as much moisture from under the sensor as possible. Replace bag of water. Step ten, come back again in ten minutes. This is your last chance to correct any mistakes. Repeat step seven. If all is good, otherwise, leave bag on for a minimum of one hour. Let dry before use for six hours to allow adhesive to cure. When ready to apply grip tape, press all areas to dry and force fluid out. If fluid is detected, your sensor is not dry yet. Do not apply grip tape till dry. All right, so it's been about two hours that the sensor has been chilling. I'm gonna start tracing the cush wide shape on the clear grip tape. Six and a half hours later. So this is the next day. I let it rest for more than six hours and everything's looking good. What actually happened overnight was I noticed this bridge point started to peel up just like the other side. So what I did was I pulled up this bottom left segment and brought it a little bit closer here, just like the other side. And it has really allowed it to settle down nicely. So everything is flush and no bubbles, so we are looking good. The next step is to mount the sensor. Before the grip tape, we are going to put it on the board and mount it with a sock and test it out. Awesome thing about this adhesive is that you can pull this up months from now and still reapply if needed. This adhesive is superior quality it will not detach from the sensor itself which is really impressive so you can uh, make minor adjustments if needed if you wanted to do the whole readjustment of the sensor positioning you'll have to reseat the whole thing and kind of start the process over i think i could have gone with a wider position especially this is a cush wide but i kind of put a little bit too light of a layer of fluid on there and it kind of dried up quick so i would advise 
you can put a little bit more liquid than I did, and then you can kind of spread out the sensor more for wider pads, and uh, yeah, utilize more real estate of the pad. But this kind of just naturally fell in place, and I'm pretty happy with it. So we'll see how it goes. Just a little advice for you guys to learn from my, I guess, missed benefit of this sensor is that you can actually spread this wider apart for more contact area. All right, so let's test this out. After sensor application, before grip tape, connect. Step one, connect sensor to device and turn on device. Test with fingers all panels in different combinations. All segments are looking great. Inactivation zones are at the very edge, the white strips. But if you go, yeah, the outside strips of each segment is not active. Everything feels good. And no ghosting, which is appreciated. Let's give it the soft test. And this is a VESC, by the way, so I'll also be checking the ADC values as well. So we're gonna do sock on. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna go on my carpet here. My luxurious red, dirty ass carpet. <laughs> Just to make sure I have something to fall on in case something goes wrong. Okay, nice. No deactivations. This is emulated posi, by the way. So I have both sides of the sensor active. But if there is inactivation, that means, and I'm trying to go on, just activate one side, just on my heel right now, then on my toe, to see if anything happens. Disconnection, no, everything feels great. This is gonna be interesting. Oh. So far, it feels really nice. I'm digging it. Try a posi disengagement. Nice. Almost forgot to test. Is there ghosting? Let's check the ADC values here. Okay, ADC 1, ADC 2, 0 0.1 volts, which is standard. Let's hop back on. 3.29 when I'm on. All sorts of different positions. Heel only right now. Okay. Whoa. I think it's time to put on the grip tape. All right, we are on. Skin step one now. Mount sensor as you would normal with soft foot and test full function a bit. Make sure everything works as it should. Make sure engagement and disengagement are on command and no ghosts come to haunt. I did the posi disengagement earlier so we are all good. If all good with steps one and two you know you have a working model and it's ready for grip tape. After applying grip tape run a hair dryer over the grip tape to force it to relax on the sensor. You want it warm not hot. And slap sensor area all over with open palm or a shoe to help settle component. You're done. I was informed by Greg there's actually a sort of a horseshoe technique of putting on the grip tape while you heat it up and I will show you guys right now. Let me show you guys the rest of this. The warnings, cautions, disclaimers. So what you need is a hair dryer and something to press in the grip tape. You're going to use a paintbrush roller or if you don't have one, be creative, improvise. I'm using some Healy wheels. Woo. So I think this will do the trick. Once I put on the grip tape, I'll just kind of be like rolling it throughout like this to get out any air bubbles, that sort of thing. We're going to heat up the grip tape a little bit first until it's warm. Then we're going to adhere it on the edges all around so like all around here but not towards the wheel the bottom area it should bridge over from here to there almost having like a trampoline effect so it should be kind of bouncy here and then what you're going to do is heat it up in a horseshoe shape so an upside down you and you're going to work your way towards the middle and then this should just sort of sink in and then you're going to go over it with your roller so that's the plan oh and almost forgot wipe down your sensor one more time with some alcohol. Oh, 
Ah, oh, okay. I'm nervous. When no return. Oh, look at that clear grip tape. All right, so we're gonna bridge it from one end to another. I think the best way is to start from the top so you can get that curve right. Man, I am sweating. Why is this so nerve wracking? Okay, so I bridged the three sides. Yeah, and we're gonna start heating it up from the outside and work our way in. right here. Oh, hope I can smooth that out. Oh shit. Let me check it. Okay, good thing. Yeah, huge guys. Make sure your uh this is super important. Make sure your connector is through the hole on the bottom before you put the grip tape. I totally forgot about that, but got lucky. Still working my way towards the very middle, but I have a few air bubbles here. Just a few here and there, but nothing major, especially in the middle. But I can probably just take a needle and pop that in this one. But yeah, let's keep going. Do its maiden voyage. I kind of want to just ride with my sock still just to keep the grip tape fresh. So let's just do a foot test. Okay. Let's check our ADC values. I have both my feet just flat right now on it. Let's lift my heel. Right, I'm going to lift my toes now. Still engaged. I'm gonna go on the very front of the board. Very good. Back of the pad, I mean. Hmm. Okay, nice. Alrighty. I think she's ready for testing. All right, guys, that was it. Thank you for joining me on the installation of this Exile front foot pad sensor. I'm really hopeful and excited about it. Now, time for the real test. I'm gonna be taking it on tricks, trails, and just beating the shit out of it. Grab yours from, I'm not sure what the website is yet. Um, I don't think Greg has set it up, but anyway, by the time this video drops, I'll have the link down below. Snag one up. I think you guys are gonna love it. So yes, grab it. Thank you again for joining. Big, big shout out to Greg. Thank you for taking so much time in developing this product. You put so much research and testing to it. Uh, this is, it's just a testament to how great our aftermarket community is. So we definitely wanna support that. I think you really hit a home run with this. It not only performs well, but it looks spectacular. Taking tech and art, putting it together. Any questions, comments you guys have or anything you wanna see tested with this sensor, please let me know. And that's it, have a great day.